Well, hello, crafty friends. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. On this uh, video tutorial, we're going to do seashells. We're going to be doing these large king scallop baking shells that look like this. I'll give you all the details. And, th and then we're going to also be doing some oyster shells. We're going to be decoupaging them with napkins and Mod Podge. And one of them, I'm going to show you how you can use this tissue paper. And then we're going to be gilding the edges. And um, I have been noticing these a lot when I've out, been out at different craft fairs and antique malls. And they want like $40 or $50 for one shell. And they're so easy. So I'm really excited. It's going to be super fun. As you're hopping on, if you're watching on Facebook, say hello. If you're watching on YouTube, hello to you too. Um, okay, so let me show you what I'm holding in my hands, and then we'll start at the very beginning. All right, just today, I made this. It took not much time at all. You're going to see how super easy this is, and I made this. I decoupaged the stuff on them, and then I gilded the edges. And let's start um, with some examples that I have to show with you. These are things that I've made probably last year. I made this big king scallop baking shell. I made this one. And then this was just a big clam shell. And here are some more of the oyster shells. There's another oyster shell that I use that beachy kind of stuff with. And then these are two little teeny clam shells. And I will get good pictures of everything when I'm done. And then these are not decoupaged, but this is a project we did, oh, maybe three or four months ago. We made these beautiful napkin rings out of oyster shells that we did gild the edges and we put kind of a sparkly, shimmery paint on the front of them. So they have little, um, a little beaded hanger thing and you could make ornaments, you could make little tassel-y things. These just happen to be for napkins. So you can see there are tons of things that you can do with oyster shells. And let's just start at the beginning. I'm gonna tell you where to get everything and what you have to do. Let me um, put all my examples off to the side so we have lots of room. Okay, so the oyster shells, they look like this when you order them on Amazon. And you can get different sizes. I want to tell you what the size of this is because I know someone's gonna ask. It is roughly five inches long. And they're usually around two to three, three and a half inches wide. Okay, so it's about five inches long. Um, if you get oyster shells from actual oysters that you've just had at a restaurant, or maybe you've prepared them at home, they're kind of hard to clean up. I tried it, they are kind of smelly. <laughs> and they're kind of slimy and they don't look as good as these. So after trying it with some that I had, uh, I just got on Amazon and looked and I ordered some and they were about a little bit over a dollar a piece for these. Okay, so when your oyster shells come, if you decide to order them from Amazon and not try to tackle it yourself, which honestly, I don't think it's worth all that extra energy to try to clean them, make them not smelly, bleach them so they look good. Um, you're gonna notice, let me hold this up close. I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know. Um, that they're gonna come and they're gonna have this purple spot right here. And then sometimes they'll have like, I don't know, some different kind of yellowy colors in the shell. And for my napkin rings, I left that, let me find one that looks really good. I left that alone. I did put a shimmery paint over the top of it. You can see the difference. But 
I left the purple and the yellow marks. When you're going to be decoupaging on these, uh, you're, if you're using napkins, for example, that have a white background, this is going to show up behind your napkin. So, the first thing that I did with these was I applied two coats of this white matte finish no prep acrylic paint Waverly brand from Walmart okay and let me show you what they end up looking like before I came live I did some so we'd be all ready to go and you wouldn't have to wait and watch me paint the inside can you see how that purple spot has disappeared and there's no yellow so this is just two coats of white paint and I went all the way to the outside edge okay so that is the story about the oysters. Order them. Unless you're willing, and I don't know that it even saves you that much money to try to do it yourself. Okay, as far as these guys go, these are what is what are called natural king scallop baking shells. They're something that you can bake scallops right in the shell. This is what the, I'll take a picture of this. This is what the packaging looks like. You might be able to order these on Amazon. I've had it for a long time and I think I picked mine up at a thrift store. Um, or you might be able to get it at a restaurant or a, you know, Williams Sonoma or something like that, a restaurant supply store of some sort. But these also come with little imperfections all of them did spots where there's darker whatnot now I'm not gonna worry if there's lumps but the spots and things will show when you go to decoupage so I did the exact same thing with these before I came live I painted two coats of this this Waverly paint came from Walmart it was not expensive I've used it on a lot of other things, two coats, and let it dry. Okay, so that is step number one. Clean everything up and paint with white paint. This is a matte finish, but I don't know that that really matters. Two coats of white paint on your shells, whether they're these king scallop shells or these oyster shells before you start the decoupage process. Okay, so then the next thing is to decide what do you want to use? And these were some pretty, pretty napkins that I got last year at Tuesday morning for $3.29. I just loved the, um, the blue coral and the blue seahorses and crabs and the starfish and there were all kinds of great things in this package and I used this stuff to make this one last year okay so that is one option I also picked these pretty napkins up at Tuesday morning these are cute. I don't like them as much because they're, they're kind of busy. And it's kind of a big variety of things. But I think if you would just cut out some of the nests or some of the individual flowers, whoops, whoops, <laughs> um, that I would like them more. All right. Um, these right here were $6. And I got them at Queen of Hearts, which is the antique uh market store that I love that's close to my house and they have these pretty blue birds and blue leaves on them. I'll open them up and show them to you. They are Michael Design Works brand, this little elephant up here in the corner. Um, and this is what the napkin looks like. Okay, I also used some of this tissue paper, which I have absolutely no idea where it came from. I just had it, and I thought, hmm, this is thin. I wonder if it would work, and it does. Okay, so um, I know that there are some places online that you can order napkins, fancy ones, 
you do, for this project, I don't think that you want to use Dollar Tree napkins. Um, this is a project that looks a little elevated. Uh, you know, and I don't think a red pickup truck from Dollar Tree is gonna be right for this type of a project, but you know what? That is personal preference. So if that's, uh, and I like those things too. I'm just not sure for this project. I would go for something that's a little bit more elevated and I would look online, check out Amazon. I know there's some, some actual websites that just sell napkins. Uh, so check that out too. I don't have any specific awareness of anything like that, but I know they're out there. So if you just ask Mr. Google, do you guys know him? Mr. Google, he'll tell you. Um, okay, so then the first thing you're gonna do once you pick out your napkin is you're going to, this is the hardest part for me because I have zero fingernails because my hands are in water all day long every day. Um, these napkins are gonna come either two ply or three ply. Okay. And separating the plies. I should have done this before I came live. Okay. Yeah, when you have zero fingernails, it's hard. So this, these particular ones just have two ply, but sometimes they'll be three ply. So you're gonna basically be pulling off the, the inside white piece of paper. And this is what you're gonna get. And you can see it's kind of sheer and that's why we painted our seashells. Okay, now the next thing you need to know <laughs> And I don't know if I'm making this sound complicated or not, but just a small amount on a glue of your, okay, somebody just said that if you put a little bit of glue on your finger, you'll be able to separate your plies on your napkins easier. Great tip, thank you. Um, where was I? Okay, so now the next thing you need to decide is do you want to, I'm looking for my examples, do you want to do a design that covers the entire shell, like this. It's the entire shell is covered except for the edges. Or do you wanna do a design where you cut something out and you just put that, you know, in the center to the side, however you like it, like this. This is one that I have started so that we can finish it off. But you notice here, it's not the whole entire thing. This was the little bird on some flowers and then a little dragonfly from the napkin that I cut out. And then I decoupage them on this. Uh, which way are you? <laughs> okay, so, so that is something you wanna think about. And um, let's see, what do we want to do? The process is exactly the same, whether you're doing an oyster shell or one of these big uh, king scallop shells. So for today, we're gonna do an oyster shell. All right, and remember we painted it so we don't have that big purple spot. Any kind of white paint, matte or glossy, I don't think it matters, two coats so you can't see that purple spot anymore. Okay, and let's do the whole shell since I have this one already cooking, this oyster shell already cooking that is just a bird and a um, a bird and the dragonfly. Okay, so we're gonna do this whole entire thing. And I need my cardboard. We are working today off of a Wilton's cake board. This is what I like to craft on. It protects my craft desk. And Mod Podge is hard once it's dried to get off of things. It's messy, so this is what we're doing, okay? I'm gonna push everything back just a little bit. All right, so we're gonna use this one right here. And what some people will do is if their edges of the oysters are razor sharp, and sometimes they are, these are not too bad, these are, these are good oyster shells, you might want to take a little sandpaper to them 
before you start this project because it would be a shame to make something beautiful and then have somebody pick it up and cut themselves <laughs> the first time. And you know what, I get this question all the time because this is like the third or fourth time I've done this type of a project. They say, well, these are lovely, but what are they for? Um, they're just a little sit about or it could be a jewelry dish or I have made them and I have some out in the other room that I forgot to get out that are little salt and pepper cellars that are just, um, they're little small uh, shells that have a, a rounder shape and I just have salt and pepper in them. And if you're having a nice meal, you can put them out and people can either use those teeny tiny little spoons or a finger to take a pinch of salt and pepper. It's just something different. Um, or this can be like put on a frame or a canvas. Uh, or it could just be sitting on the top of a stack of books. Or you could drill a hole in it and it could be a Christmas ornament or it could be a package topper. So, I mean, there's tons of different things that you can do with these. So hopefully that answers the questions that I get all the time. Yeah, it's really cute, but what in the world is it for? Okay. So, um, okay, so we're going to be using some of this Mod Podge in matte. Uh, I like matte Mod Podge better, but if you like glossy, by all means use that. They also have some that is a little bit antique, and so it kind of gives a little bit of a yellow brownish tint to your projects. They look a little bit like more vintage, so you could use that too. Or you could just use whatever you have on hand. Uh, Mod Podge is a little bit on the kind of pricey side, and so you can make your own Mod Podge. You can ask Mr. Google. Again, he knows everything, Mr. Google. Just Google uh, recipe for homemade Mod Podge, and it, it'll give it to you. It's basically made out of white, school glue and water. <laughs> um, but you can pick this stuff up everywhere. This is eight fluid ounces. I got it at Hobby Lobby for $5.99. You can get it at Walmart, Joann's, I mean everywhere. Target, every, every, everywhere. Okay, and you're going to just take a brush. It doesn't have to be a good one. These are looking terrible. And your seashell is completely dry where you painted it. And you're just going to put a pretty thick coat of Mod Podge. You don't want puddles, but you want it coated fully. Clear out to the edges. And up in this little spot right here, because you're going to cover that too. Um, so you'll just paint on one layer of Mod Podge and then pick up any puddles that you have in here on your brush and just put them back in your thing. Okay, and this is what it looks like. I mean, yeah, you can't really see anything. Okay, and then we need to decide which part of the napkin do we want to have visible. And I have several with the birds, so what if I mean, what if we just did these pretty blue flowers right here? Let's try that just for something different. Okay? So I'm going to I could cut this smaller, but I'm just going to kind of lay it on my oyster shell and push it in. I'll pick it up in just a minute. So you can see I'm just pushing it in. By the way, if these comments here are driving you bananas, you should be able to swipe them away if you're watching this on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, you won't have that problem. Uh, okay, so I'm just pushing it in basically to all the area that I have put Mod Podge on. And then I'm going to use my scissors to do a rough cut around the outside of my oyster shell. 
We'll come back when it's fully stuck down and clean it up. This is going to get us started. You're going to have a few little puckers in certain places, but that will disappear once you get your Mod Podge on there and you smooth it out a little bit. Okay, so mine is on. I think about as good as it's going to go. And we're going to get our Mod Podge out again. And we're just going to put, again, a generous coat going all the way out to the edges of our Mod Podge. And I see an area where it's not wanting to stick up here in this little shallow part. So you want to put on a coat and go all the way out to the edges pretty much. And then if you have puddles, if you've ever used Mod Podge before, um, possibly you know that when you leave a thick area, when it dries, it can be a little cloudy and you don't want that. So just use your brush to pick up any areas where there are puddles of Mod Podge and make sure that you go all the way out to the edges. All right, so we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. The process is exactly the same if you're using something like tissue paper. This um, is beautiful tissue paper. I wish I knew where I got it. I just thought it would be fun and different to do a shell with that, and it, it turned out beautiful, but exactly the same thing. Paint it, let it dry, apply the Mod Podge, put your stuff on, Loosely cut around it, apply another coat of Mod Podge, and let that dry. All right, so this one has gone through all those steps. This is the one that I decided to just do the little bird and the dragonfly. Okay, but I want to show you the next step, which it would be the same, whether it's an all-over thing or just a, an individual little area. Okay, so the next thing is you want to clean up, uh, if you did the bigger one, you're gonna have to clean up the edges. So when this is a little bit more dry, I'll show you that. Usually I'll just use my scissors to cut in as close as I can. And then I have these little sanding pads. Oh, where are they? Um, the brand is Surf Prep, I think, and I, picked these up at the um, Pinners Conference in Atlanta. I have no idea where you'd actually purchase these, but you could use sandpaper, you could use a sanding block, um, and you're just gonna sand, you're gonna cut in as close as you can, and then you're gonna sand to remove the edges. But you don't do that until it's 100% dry. Okay, now we're gonna start the next step, which is gilding. Okay, and I don't know if you've ever gilded. Oh gosh, these always get glued shut. Okay, um, ever used gilding, which is gold, silver, copper leaf. Okay, where am I? We're using Maker Studio, and I'll drop some links here on Facebook as well as over at YouTube when I'm all finished. Um, this is the glue that you need to use when you're gonna do gilding with any color of leaf, whether it's gold leaf, silver leaf, or copper leaf. And um, you cannot use Mod Podge or any other kind of glue. It has to be the gilding size because it's designed for this application. So what you're gonna do, and I'll give you a link to this because Maker Studio sells this and they also sell the three different colors of metallic leaf and just so you know this is not real gold <laughs> so it's not a hundred dollars it's like nine dollars for a package of 25 that will go a long ways and this i don't remember how much it is but like eight dollars or something so it's not real gold 
<laughs> and it's not a hundred dollars but if you want you can purchase that uh, not from maker studio i don't know where you get it i don't know why you would want to when you can use something that looks just as fabulous uh but it's up to you okay so i'm gonna just use an artist brush to pick up some of my mod some of my excuse me gilding size <gasps> And I'm going to apply it on the edges, and I'll come over and show you in just a minute. Um, you're going to put it just a little bit into the center of your shell, so it will show up. But you also want to cover the very, very outside edge, too. And when you're working with oyster shells, they sometimes have these weird areas, like right here. Where it's thick and you definitely want to get that covered because you're going to want your leaf to cover that up when it goes on it's going to look um, sort of milky and then it's really interesting it starts to turn kind of a greenish opalescent color and and then it doesn't look milky and it just looks kind of greenish when it's ready to use. So let me just get this all on here and then I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So gilding size has to come to tack before you apply your metallic leaf over the top of it. And it usually will come to tack anywhere between 10 minutes, um, sometimes a little sooner. It just completely depends. If it's on paper or something that's going to really absorb it, it'll come to tack quicker. If you're doing this on um, glass or metal, it'll take a little bit longer because it's not porous. Uh, so I want to hold this up. I want to put my brush over here. Oh my gosh, my desk is a disaster here. I'm going to hold this up so that you can hopefully see what I'm talking about. Can you see along the edges how it's kind of shiny and a little bit, uh, I'm sorry if I'm making you seasick. A little bit opalescent. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just a few minutes to come to tack. And let's come back to this guy right here. And I have my heat gun out. I'm gonna need to use it for a few minutes to get this a little bit more dry. So talk amongst yourselves or tell me where you're watching from or Tell me if you've ever done this kind of thing before or if you've seen them and wanted to know. Tell me something in the comments. Okay, this is not going to be perfectly dry. Um, but that'll be a little better. And I have, I have size on my fingers, they're sticky. So I need to just use a wipe here to get that off before I touch anything because my fingers are sticky and they'll pull this tissue, this uh, napkin up. So what do you guys think so far? I hope I'm not making it sound complicated because it really isn't. You clean your shell, you paint it, you put Mod Podge on it, you stick your napkin on, you put another coat of Mod Podge on, you let it dry, then you're gonna trim it, and if necessary, use sandpaper. Then you're gonna put on your special glue, which is called size. You're gonna let that get the right stickiness. That's called coming to tack. And then we'll do the gold leaf. I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, I think this is reasonably dry, so. Can you see how I have all those edges of paper? I am just going to take a cruddy pair of scissors 
don't use your best sewing scissors for this. And I'm going to go around the edges. And there is a possibility when you do this that you'll see areas that you didn't get tacked down well enough with your Mod Podge. So you might need to go back and apply some more Mod Podge. And, you know, repeat that step. is honestly a little bit easier on just one of these king scallop baking things than on an oyster because they don't have all these weird shapes to them but we're going to cover this area around the edge up with the metallic leaf anyway so it doesn't have to be Okay, so I'm just cutting away this part. And it's a little rough around the edge. So you, you pick a little bit of that up with your scissors and then with a sanding block or um, a piece of sandpaper. Uh, see, we definitely need to cut this off. But then if you can't get every single bit of it, don't sweat it because you can just cover it with gold leaf gold or silver or copper, whatever you want to do. Okay, so you get the, you get the, the gist of that. Um, I'm going to let this continue to dry a little bit more, and I'll finish this one off camera and get pictures. Okay, so let's come back to this guy right here. I'm going to fan it for just a minute because it really does need to come to tack. Otherwise, the leaf won't stick to it. Um, so while I'm doing that, did you guys happen to see the project that we did yesterday here at DIY Dreaming? Can I fan and hold? This was one of them. Wasn't it cute? This is one of the happiest, brightest projects that I've done in a really long time. Here was another one. So those were fun. And then um, I made this beautiful pillow the day before with something that I am calling vintage fabric lace and button snippet strips. So I showed you how to do that. And we stenciled this pillow. Uh, and then we also made this beautiful journal covered in those and we made these cute little wristlets i just wanted to show you those things so you can see that we do a huge variety of projects around here if you're new i would love for you to say i'm new so that i can see your name and say hello welcome uh, if you if this is the first time you've ever seen DIY Dreaming or seen me. My name is Heidi Scott. Tell me that in the comments. Um, so I like to do a ton of different projects. I mean, the variety. There's so many things that you can do. Uh, also on Sundays, I do something called Christ and Crafting, which I'd love to have you join me for that. Okay, let's look at this closely. Just a little bit more. This is the difficulty of being live, <laughs> is I have to show you all the steps along the way, and I don't want you to sit, have to sit and watch me paint, or, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, and hey, thank you guys so much for the stars here, here on Facebook. That's amazing, thank you. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you that, um, if you're watching on Facebook and you're having an issue where you're not ever finding out when I'm going live 
or you think maybe I've quit crafting because you haven't seen me in so long, I have a new texting alert system and I'll drop the phone number here in the comments. I'll try to put it at the very, very top as the first comment and also somewhere down towards the bottom. And if you'll just send me a text uh, and answer the questions that it asks you, basically what your name is, I think is the main thing. Uh, then I will do what I did today for the very first time before I went live 10 minutes beforehand. I sent a text out to the 108 people that have signed up for text alerts just since yesterday afternoon. So I'm getting used to it, but um, I think it's going to be good. It'll let you know. I'll tell you what we're doing when I send you a text alert. And if you don't want to watch it, no problem. Um, I'll let you know if there's any sales or anything happening. And um, yeah, so if you want to have alerts that I've done something or there's a sale or something, uh, look for the number. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, it's a 404 number. And um, just send a text to that and follow the instructions and then I'll, I'll give you I'll send you a text 10, 15 minutes before I go live and I'll tell you what, what we're gonna be doing. Okay, so this is gold leaf. It's not real gold, if you're joining me late. It's from Maker Studio, it's awesome stuff. They also have silver leaf and they also have copper leaf and they're all like completely reasonable you'll get in if you order this in any color you'll get what's called a book I've cut this one up it's gonna have 25 sheets all separated this looks a little bit more normal all separated by this orange tissue paper and I'll show you how to use that and um, it's good stuff we're using gold today but you could do silver, gold, copper, whatever you like. Okay, and I do think sometimes it's easy if you um, cut your books. This is the, the binding, so cut them this way into smaller pieces. And oh, here's a half of a piece, so we'll use it because we're thrifty here. We're gonna fold back the top layer of orange tissue paper so we can hold on to our book of metallic leaf and I'm gonna get brave and I'm just gonna stick it down. Pull up my tissue paper and then I am burnishing, I'm just rubbing the leaf onto the surface. And that's gonna be a lot extra because this is a very shapey uh, oyster shell. Let's just lay that piece down right there. Like I said, it's not valuable, so don't worry about the little scraps. Um, but if you are, uh, what's the right word, frugal like me or thrifty like me, I'll show you what I do with the extra bits. Okay, let's take another piece. This is the last piece in my gold book. I'm going to have to get some more. So I lifted my top sheet of orange tissue and I'm holding on to the, the binding part with it folded over. And I'm just going to lay this down on top of our shell and I'm pushing it down and then you can with your tissue paper just sort of wad it up and you can use that to press or burnish is the, the art word burnish your leaf your metallic leaf onto your seashell so I'm first just pushing it down, and then I'm just gonna do light circular motion to pull off the big pieces. This is so pretty, oh my gosh. Come off, got some gold stuck on my little bird. And then, once you get your big pieces off, I'll show 
show you what I do. And then we'll finish this shell. Okay, I'm not, I'm not cheap, but I am frugal. And I, I think it's smart to use what you have whenever possible and to save what you can whenever possible. So in the last three years that I've been doing leafing, I have saved little bits of books, uh, little scraps of all the different colors of leaf in this little tub right here. And sometimes it's fun to do a project where you just pick a pinch up of a mix of different colors and use that. So I just put my little scraps back in here and I can use it sometime in the future. Okay, so we're using just a stiff brush. It doesn't have to be super stiff, but it's a creddy brush. It's not a fancy one. And I'm just going around my little oyster shell right here. And you can, you can do gold leaf on a ton of different things. So if this looks interesting to you, you should try it. And when I get done here, I'll drop some, I'll put some links in the comments and also in the description. So you can go look at what they have at Maker Studio. This is looking pretty. Um, I did at one point, this was gilded. Also, this little cross right here, which is just a Dollar Tree little cross wood shape, was gilded. Also, this burlap canvas, this it's a secret, but this is hot glue, lumps of hot glue that I have gilded with gold leaf. There's so many cool things that you can do with it. You can put it on glass. I mean, it can go on anything. So. You would just continue on pulling whatever little bits and pieces are not stuck into the size that you put on the edges. And this is what you get. See how I gilded this whole edge? And then I took my, um, I took the lining in just a little bit around the outside and this would be a great a great little ring dish a great little sit about um, we had this last uh, weekend we had a surprise party for our, our son who's 25 for his birthday and he's married and our in, his in-laws our in-laws his brides parents came over and uh, they were in my craft room here looking and you know being interested at what I do and they saw that uh, this one and the dad was like that is so cool he is wanting to do something with red in one of these but um, they're just I think they're just really special and they're so easy to do Seriously, um, they're unique. You can do the whole, cover the whole entire thing or just choose a little part of your napkin that you want to highlight. Um, they make a great little gift. If you were gonna buy them, they're gonna be at least $40, if not more. Um, I mean, it's crazy. So why would you do that when you could make them yourself? And it's not difficult um, when you get it finished I like to go back over it one final time with another coat of Mod Podge just so it's good and sealed in there now I wouldn't put any wet food in this like don't serve applesauce <laughs> or cottage cheese or pasta or anything in it you could put uh, some hard candies or something that's wrapped in this if you want. You can wash these with a wet sponge or a wet paper towel and then dry it off right away. Don't put this in the dishwasher. Don't put it in a big sink full of soapy warm water. But they're great. Uh, so I want to know, 
Tell me in the comments here or on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, what do you think? Do you like it? Is this something you would be inclined to try? Other thing I wanna know is do you like the individual piece style or do you like the all over? I wanna know that too. Okay, Sandra says she loves them all. I'm gonna come up closer so I can read. Donna says she loves it. <laughs> Candy says she loves it. Do you guys like this, this individual image? Or do you like the all over pattern? That's something I want to know also. Hey, Martha. They now have dishwasher safe Mod Pod. They do, and you know what? I actually have some of it here in my shelf. Where is it? But I wanna tell you something about it. Okay, I don't know where it is. Anyways. Um, the dishwasher safe Mod Pod takes a month to cure. Did you know that? So, if you made these, you would apply it, let it dry, apply another coat, let it dry, and then it has to cure for a month before you can use it. And honestly, you don't need to eat applesauce out of these. <laughs> they can just be a pretty little sit about, a ring dish, uh, ornament for your tree, something to set on a book, a little gift, um, you know. But if you want to serve something in, if you want to be able to use this, uh, with food, then by all means, look at the, the dishwasher safe Mod Podge. I did notice that it was pretty expensive. Um, so, and I need instant gratification. <laughs> That's why my projects are always really sort, short and simple and quick. Uh, so I don't wanna start a project that won't be finished for a month. That's just me. But maybe you're more patient than I am. So, I think that's pretty much all I want to show you guys. I, want, I do want to tell you that you can get napkins everywhere. If you have a particular style, there are napkins out there in every possible design you could ever imagine. These um, decoupage and gilded shells, whether they're these big king scallop baking shells or their oyster shells, they are not just a summer thing. These are something for the whole year long. Um, I really love the idea of making Christmas ornaments out of them or package toppers. So you could do Christmas napkins. You could do fall napkins. You could do Easter napkins. You could do any style you could imagine, whether it's uh, pink chinoiserie, which is what this style is called. This is also chinoiserie, all these cute little pagodas. I mean, you could do anything. So, while you're out and about, start looking at napkins and thinking about what you might want to do. Look on Amazon for oyster shells. If you don't want to have to deal with getting the stink out of them and then the slime and bleaching them, they're not expensive. Um, do whatever size appeals to you the most. These, I think we said, are about five inches long, what I'm working with. Um, if you like glossy Mod Podge or the stuff that the Mod Podge that's tinted to look vintage, use that by all means. Or ask Mr. Google if you want to make it yourself. He'll give you a recipe. And if you want to look at the size, the special glue, or any of the leaving, I'm going to hop off in just a second and get you my links. If you do end up ordering that, I'd love it if you'd order it through my link because then I make a small commission. And that is, you know, how I keep crafting and keep ordering more oyster shells from Amazon and that kind of thing. Anyways, let me know what your questions are. Do a this 
or a this, or say something in the comments. Check to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. Send me a text if you want to get alerts when I go live and you want to know what the project will be because I'm going to always tell you that so you can decide, nope, I'm not interested in decoupaging seashells or whatever the project is. Uh, so you can decide before I even get started. And I'm always going to tell you if there's any kind of promotion or sale happening that I'm aware of. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. Uh, my craft desk is really too messy for me to straighten everything up so you can take a screenshot. So I will just get pictures myself. I'll put them in the comments and I'll put them over here at DIY Dreaming. All right, have a wonderful, blessed rest of your day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't know what we'll be doing. I have about 12 things that I've started. But it'll be different from today and different from yesterday and different from the day before, whatever it is. So, hope to see you tomorrow. Bye. You want to see more flowers? Well, <laughs> I can certainly do more flowers. I do have a few more that I am kind of working on. Um, just for the newbie here, these are a couple of my favorite flowers that we did. These are coffee filter cherry blossoms that we did about a month, a month and a half ago. And these are coffee filter little flowers. Uh, and I have like 20 other styles over here because flowers are my thing. Almost all of my crafts here at DIY Dreaming are going to be either faith, family, or flowers. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you later. And thank you so much to everybody who sent stars. I appreciate that.